Well, praise the Lord, how good it is to be back in his house. Uh, due to circumstances uh, that's going on in our community uh, right now, the next three Wednesday evenings, we'll be having online church for the next three Wednesday evenings. That'll be the first three Wednesdays in January, okay? Now, right now, we're going to continue to have our uh, Sunday morning service at 1030, like we've uh, been doing. But on Wednesday evening, uh, we will be doing our online service at 6 o'clock. Trying to keep people safe from COVID. The numbers of COVID is really rising in our community. Uh, I got a message today, how true it is, I do not know, but I got a message today that possibly as many as 60% of residents in Cook County is dealing with COVID. COVID. And I do know that uh, several churches has already closed their uh, in-house services again. We need to be in prayer for new life. Baptist Church. We need to be in prayer for Spring Head Baptist Church. Uh, we need to be in prayer for the Assembly of God. And I don't know how many others that may have already uh, had to close back down again because of COVID. Uh, we want to remember Brother Steve as we go to prayer time uh, this evening. Uh, Steve has, he don't have COVID, but he's been exposed to it. And that's why he's not here this evening. So that's just uh, FYI, remember, uh, the first three Wednesday nights in uh, January, we will have online service at 6 o'clock. We will continue to gather on Sunday morning as long as we all can stay healthy. Amen? Amen. So uh, for the next three Wednesday night services, we'll be online again. All right? And if you want to sing, turn to page two, uh, 217. Steve's not here, so I'm going to try to lead y'all in a song. And uh, I told uh, Brother Macmillan, he said he had some new hearing aids. I told him he might want to turn them off when I start singing. Amen. <laughs> but uh, I'll do the best I can do, okay? All right. <laughs> What better name to sing about? There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its words. It sounds as music in my ears, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. And they didn't need anybody to lead. <laughs> I, you know, I see somebody back there that can lead these next two verses that we're going to sing. Come on up here, Patricia. I, you know, I, I forgot that you are our assistant song director. So you come on up here and lead verse two and verse four, okay? About 16 people just went out the door. You're probably right. <laughs> Oh, how I love 
did a good job. Thank you, Patricia. Listen, your preacher had to conserve his wind. <laughs> uh, if you will, take your Bible and turn with me over to uh, Genesis chapter 6. I want us to look at verse number 8. Uh, and we're just going to have a very short devotional type message this evening unless the Holy Spirit gets a hold of my heart. Uh, and I pray sometimes that he does that because whenever we plan to do things simply, God does things differently sometimes. But uh, while you're turning there, let me just make mention again that uh, the COVID cases in Cook County as well as Barron County and surrounding counties it's on the increase uh, at a rate quicker than I believe it was whenever it was uh, first uh, announced that it was coming this way. And uh, for that reason, we decided not to do live church services on our Wednesday evening service for the next three Wednesday evenings. We will continue to gather on Sunday morning at 1030. But let me remind you again that we need to social distance. We'll give that holy wave and that holy hug. Uh, and I noticed this past Sunday and Sundays prior to that, that as we leave the church, we got a bad habit of gathering up outside of the church. Friends, it won't take but one case of COVID from a church member to shut us down for 14 days. Y'all know how I know that? Because I've already had that virus and had to shut us down. Not for 14 days. We were shut down for 21 days because I was so weak I couldn't come back. So please, please, I know we want to hug necks and fellowship like we always have, but we've got to be careful. Lord, I wouldn't wish that virus on my worst enemy. So please, whatever you do, be careful. I hope I don't have any enemies. Amen? Amen. But I've been preaching a long time, and preachers has that happen to them every now and then. All right. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. The Bible says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this passage of Scripture that reminds us that uh, grace can even be found in the Old Scripture, the Old Testament. And uh, this evening, as we think about uh, Noah and what he had to go through, uh, God, I just pray that you'll let us see from uh, this some tools that we can use to overcome the storms of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I want to bring to you a devotional topic that I've titled, spiritual tools to help you overcome the storms of life. Now, friends, if you haven't ever had a storm in your life, hold on, there's a storm coming. Uh, it can come at any given moment in your life. And uh, so you need to be prepared and know what to do when those storms come. Have you ever heard the saying, into each life, some rain must fall? And, it, and it, it really does. Rain must fall. Trials often come. And friend, let me tell you something. Usually when they come, they come in big numbers. Uh, as somebody said, in bunches like bananas. And so uh, people of faith, uh, no sprinkles, but, uh, you know, <laughs> no sprinkles at all. People who have faith usually have full blown storms to come in their life. Now, when the rain is falling in your life, turn to the book of Genesis and read the story of Noah and his family. Uh, you could start prior to, uh, I guess, probably start, start your reading in chapter 6 and read on through chapter 9. All of the things that Noah and his family had to go through. You see, Noah knew about storms. In fact, he knew that, uh, that the storm could just virtually 
wipe everything around him out because it did. I mean, it destroyed the then known world. Now, Noah had no choice in what he was doing but to trust God. Now, I don't know how you feel, but we're in a storm right now. This pandemic that we're dealing with is a storm. Uh, I'm, uh, I'll soon be 600 years old. Six of them. <laughs> Somebody told my age, 65 years old. I know some of you looking at my white hair uh, online and said, you mean he's not but 65 years old? Well, I've been pastoring Baptist for 40 years. My hair turned white early. And so, uh, but listen, uh, we're in a pandemic. I'm 65 years old, soon be 65 years old. I never wore a mask in my life except on Halloween when I was a young man. And uh, when we had to start wearing these things, I pulled mine off one day in a store, and the fellow said, Preacher, please put it back on. But uh, I'll be glad when we can get rid of them. But I praise God for those of you who've been obedient to to try to protect yourself and everyone else by wearing a mask. And, and, uh, but Noah knew what it was to go through a storm. We're in a storm right now. This pandemic is a storm. Somebody said, well, preacher, do you have faith? Yes, I do, but I got common sense too, amen? And we need to have that. Now, Noah had no choice but to trust God for his very survival. And he did, and he did exactly what God told him to do, and because he did what God told him to do, he and his family were able to survive the storm. Now, there are certain tools that you and I need that if we study these three chapters of Scripture, that, uh, that will bless us and that will teach us uh, the tools that we need uh, to overcome any storm. And so I'm going to just give you five. There's many more than five, but I'm going to give you five because we, we've had some things that we need to do to, to, you know, you remember whenever we said we were going to have a short devotion and decorate the church for Christmas? Well, we're going to have a devotional message and undecorate the church this evening, okay? All right? Now, five tools to help you overcome the storms of life. Tool number one. You've got to know the promises of God. And the greatest promise that the Lord Jesus Christ ever gave to us was, I'll never leave thee, nor will I ever forsake thee. Now, friend, I don't know about you, but I make my life on that promise right there. Amen? Jesus said, I'll never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. Sometimes Scripture is the only solid ground to stand on that keeps us from sinking. And so we need to stand on Scripture. Now, there's a lot of people standing on everything but Scripture. Now, on the, our church page, I do my what I call my coffee and conversation devotional. I really thought about changing the name of that devotional to something else because I had a fellow to send me a message last week and said, Preacher, I don't drink coffee. Well, I sent him a message back and said, Well, do you drink hot chocolate? He said, oh, I do. I said, well, you drink hot chocolate while the rest of us drink coffee. Uh, but everybody that I talk to says, don't change the name of the devotional. We like it. Coffee and Conversation. Rays of Hope from Gordon Avenue Baptist Church. So we're going to leave that alone, okay? But on my own personal Facebook page, I've started doing what I call encouragement for today. Rays of Hope to get us through these dark times that we're living in. And those devotions are based on scriptures that will help us through troubled times. So stand on the promises of God. It'll keep you from falling into the sinking mire of darkness that's all around us. Remember, Jesus is still the light of the world. Even in the midst of dark times, he's still the light. So it can and will keep you afloat. Number two, tool number two, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. If there's ever been a time that we need to pray, it's now. Uh, now, 
Prayer is important. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Pray without ceasing. Encouragement is found in prayer. Now, first we can pray individually to God. In a few, in a few moments we're going to have a corporate prayer where we all gather and go by our prayer list. Secondly, we can come together uh, and do that corporate prayer. So you can pray individually, and then you can do that corporate prayer where we discuss our prayer concerns and pray. But listen, pray without ceasing. Always have a prayer on your heart, especially during these times of darkness. Number three, the third tool that you need is to affirm your faith with praise. It's not always easy to praise God when things are not going well. I want you to know that. It's not. Uh, but we need to praise God in spite of things and the things that's going on around and about us. Whether we've traveled safely through the storm or whether we still find ourselves in the storm like we are right now, God delights in hearing us give thanksgiving and praise. Think about the life of the Apostle Paul. Paul said he had been beaten, shipwrecked, imprisoned, so he knew this principle well, and he continued to praise God. And that's why he encourages us to always make our petitions known to God, but always reminds us to uh, praise God for his goodness and for the strength of our faith. Friend, without our faith, we could not make it through a pandemic. We could not make it through illnesses and sicknesses. I stood by the bedside of my mother as she left this world. Without my faith, I wouldn't have been able to do that. I stood by the hospital bedside as we took life support off of my wife's mother and said goodbye to her. Without faith, we wouldn't have been able to do that. Uh, and so faith carries us through. Those times in our lives, those were stormy seas. And uh, so many times as uh, I stood by the bedside of many family members, and some of you families may be listening right now, stood by your side as you said goodbye to your loved one. Friends, those are stormy times. And without our faith, we could not make it. And so we ought to dwell on our faith and give God praise for our faith. Next year, I walked through a valley with you. You know. And I walked through valleys with some of you, some of you others. And so God, God is able. So affirm your faith and affirm it with praise. When I said goodbye to my mother, I said, Mama, I hate for you to go, but I'll see you soon. You see, it's my faith that carried me through that. Number four, keep showing up. Keep showing up. Now, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, large feats begin at the end of small steps. Every day that we are faithful in small ways, we are opening the door for God to do something incredible that we cannot do. So we must take the concrete actions that only we can do to see our situation through. What am I trying to say to you? Keep showing up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Continue to show up. Continue to pray. Continue to seek God. And then number five, the last tool I'll give you this evening. Nor found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's why he was able to do what he did in uh, the rest of these uh, three chapters that we mentioned, chapter 6 through chapter 9. you got to believe in miracles. Now, I don't know about you, but we need a miracle right now. Some people think the vaccine is going to be a miracle. I pray it is. Somebody asked me the other day, said, Preacher, you going to take the vaccine? Yes, sure, as they get it out, I am. I take the flu vaccine every year. Uh, I took a vaccine to keep from getting the shingles. But I understand they've updated that now, so i got to check on that next time I go to the VA. But 
more than trusting in a vaccine, I'm going to trust in God. Because God is a God of miracles. I mean, the God I serve called dead men from a tomb. He, he broke up a funeral procession one day and called a little boy out of a casket. He walked into a man's house and uh, they told him that the little girl that he was going to visit was already dead. He said, oh no, she's just sleeping. She's just sleeping. They laughed him to scorn. The Bible says he put them out of the house. Why? Because of their lack of faith. And he walked in, he took the little maiden by the hand and said, uh, get up. And she arose. He called Lazarus out of a tomb. He'd been dead four days. I still remember what his sister said to Jesus. Oh, Lord, you don't want to go in that tomb. By now, surely he's stinking. <laughs> what was she saying to him? He's already began to decompose. He's been dead for four days. But Jesus walked in there where the decomposition had already taken place, and he called him by his name, and they walked out together. Actually, I don't read that Jesus walked in. He just called him out. Amen. Lazarus, come forth. Those are just five little tools that will make a difference in your life as you deal with this pandemic. Now, there are many others that we could give you. But uh, think about those things. Dwell on those things. And let God bless you as you continue to carry on your faith even in the darkness of a pandemic. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for reminding us that the Bible, this book that I hold in my hand, is a treasure chest full of tools that will carry us through any times of troubles that we'll ever face. And the greatest promise of all is that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, but that you'll be with us no matter what. I pray maybe someone may have heard this uh, by way of uh, our online service tonight that maybe needs this more than anyone else. Use this for your glory, that Jesus may be glorified. In his name I pray, amen.